Hey folks, welcome to part 14 of the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam Series. Our first question is going to be which of the following can best be used to compute percent of total? Would you use a reference line, an LOD expression, a quick table calculation, or an ad hoc calculation? Um, again, which of these would be best uh, you know, or most ideal to compute percent of total? So first of all, what is a reference line? So let's go into Tableau over here and let me start with a new sheet. So we can do maybe something over a period of time. So then I can have kind of like a line chart going. So I'm gonna have sales over time. That's what we'll bring in um, again as a line chart. And then when you head over to the analytics pane, that's where you'll, you'll kind of find the, the reference line, which you could drag in here. And again, you can apply it at the table pane or cell level. So let's just do table over here. Does this really give me an option to display percent of total. It does not, it really does not. In fact, if you think about it, in which case would you wanna see percent of total? In those events where you might have like row level data and you wanna see what percent of the overall table that one particular row or the one particular level of granularity that you're looking at is uh, you know, accounting for percent of total. So with something like this, obviously that's not something that you would expect to see. So that can't be the correct solution. It's not going to be reference line. How about the second option, LOD expression? Can we compute percent of total using an LOD expression? Um, so again, uh, this sheet is actually perfect to demonstrate that, right? So all I have here is sum of sales by subcategory and now let's say I just wanted to see what percent of these overall sales, right? Like if I highlight everything here, it's 2.3 million. What percent of that 2.3 million is this accessories accounting for, that 167,000 number essentially? So we wanna take this number and divide it by the 2.3 million. How can we best do that? So again, uh, an LOD expression or level of detail uh, uh, calculation we can create easily by going into uh, create calculated field and we can do something like um, take the sum and um, or really rather just sales not sum so we're gonna take sales and what because what it's gonna do is gonna it's gonna go line by line so what is sales for accessories it's 167,000 and then we want to divide by that 2.3 million number so how do we get that 2.3 million number at the accessories level, well for that, that's why we use an LOD expression, right? We were gonna fixate on the overarching sales number as a whole so that it's not looking at this level of granularity, if that makes sense. So we're gonna use a fixed uh, calculation over here and specifically all we're doing is taking uh, the sum of sales. Again, we're not, we're not defining any dimensions here. We just want the overarching grand total of sums. Uh, or, or of sales rather, and that should be it. So if I do uh, percent of total sales, I can, that's what I will name my field. I can hit apply, and then I can actually drag that over here. And now I have my percent of uh, percent of sales. You'll notice it's a zero, and that's because, you know, by default, it looks like we're trying to get int integers out of it. So what you'll wanna do is uh, go to format over here, change that to percent, one or two decimal places. Let's just leave it at two. And you have your percent of sales. So I'm sure if you grab a calculator and you do 167,000 divided by that 2.3 million, you will end up with 7.19%. So yes, is, um, is an LOD expression a way to compute percent of total? It is but not so fast. That doesn't mean necessarily that it's the solution. And that's why you should really walk through all of these options before you you know, just claim one of them is the best solution because maybe multiple solutions here can be uh, used to compute percent of total, but maybe they're not, they might not necessarily be the best. So let's just cut, uh, keep going down this list. What's the next option? Quick table calculation. Hmm, what's that? So again, let me replicate this uh, this sheet so that I could you know maintain what was already there. So again, we started with something like this, right? So subcategory and then the sum of sales. And um, what is it? What is a, a quick table calculation? Well, if you right click on a measure um, in the drop down here, you will see what's known as the quick table calculation, and you have this ability to either show a running total or a difference or a percent difference or a percent of total. And what that essentially does is, respective to this table, it's going to quickly compute 
these values. So you can get something like a running total, which you'll see incrementally, right? That's accessories. When you add accessories and appliances, you get this. When you add, you know, the the, the first three, you get this. So it's going to incrementally uh, increase, of course. But again, we're talking about percent of total. Can you compute that here? You absolutely can. And what if now I bring my LOD expression just to kind of verify if I bring that here side by side, you'll notice the values are the same. So the only difference is I took the time to create um, an LOD expression, which took time, whereas I could have just right clicked and went to the straight to the quick table calculation, which was a walk in the park, right? It's a piece of cake. So really, the best solution so far would be a quick table calculation, not an LOD expression, even though you can achieve the same output. Final option, ad hoc calculation. There's really no such thing. It's not an official term, ad hoc calculation. Um, I imagine you could probably, you know, type in what I did here in terms of like uh, the sales divided by, you know, the fixed um, sum of sales, which I did already. If, if that's even considered, um, um, an ad hoc calculation, but again, that's that's not what they're after here. That's really more of uh, a distractor. So I wouldn't say that's the correct solution. But I'm just going to wrap this up just uh, just for the sake of it. And it looks like we're getting an error message. So cannot be used here. A measures. Okay, so I guess you cannot even type in an LOD expression straight into a pill like I did, like I did there. So again, the correct solution here will be the quick table calculation. By the way, if you do enjoy videos like this, do me a solid, hit like, and be sure to subscribe for more content just like this. Next question, what is the default aggregation applied to a measure when it is first dragged um, onto or into a tableau view? Is it going to be average? count, sum, or continuous. So again, if I drag a measure in, so let's say I have a blank canvas over here, I grab any of these measures, so let's say, well not cost, but maybe quantity. If I drag quantity here, what do I get? Do I get the average? Do I get, you know, the min, max, sum, what is it? Well, it's sum, right? And it can vary um, based on measure, but in most cases, it will default to sum. So it's not average, it's not count, it's not, and again, it does vary. If I did um, something to the effect of, I believe, returns, as you can see, it's gonna get you a count. So if I drag that here, um, it's gonna get you uh, a count as opposed to a sum. But in most cases, it will be sum. And I do have the ability to change that, right? I mean, I could go over here and instead of sum, I could type in average, and then it'll give me the average of quantity. But you do have the, that. That's not changing the default because if I if I went to a new sheet and I drag quantity here again, it goes back to sum. Well, you can actually change that. So if I right click on quantity and I go to default properties and then go to aggregation, you see how sum is checked off. What that's telling you is whenever you drag this measure into a new sheet, by default the aggregation method is going to be sum. And we can change that, right? Let's do median, right? Now I have it set to medium and still some over here because we're talking about a sheet where it, it was already applied. But if I go into a new sheet and I bring, uh, what was it, quantity? If I bring in quantity, now you'll see it defaults to medium, um, uh, median, just for your awareness. But in terms of, you know, it, it, with respect to this question, the default aggregation is going to be sum. It's not gonna be average count or continuous, it's going to be sum, so that's the solution here. Next question, in which scenario is a packed bubble chart most effectively used? Comparing parts of a whole, displaying trends over time, illustrating volume differences, or analyzing geographical data? Um, so again, what is a bubble chart? So. First of all, pop quiz. Imagine you know what a bubble chart is. What do you need to create a bubble chart? A measure, a dimension, hopefully you should know off the top of your head, but if you don't, it's gonna be, uh, I believe, one dimension and one or more measures. Yep, that is correct. That's because I did look at it beforehand, <laughs> but uh, hopefully you should remember now if you are preparing for the exam. So um, let's say we wanna compare subcategories maybe, or maybe even just categories and particularly sales. So we click on packed bubble. What does that give us? Well, it's it's kind of hard to see here again because they're almost split out. So instead of category, let's just do uh, subcategory. So I'm gonna do subcategory and you'll notice some 
you know, some bi uh, bubbles here are bigger than some of the other ones. And why? Well, that's because the actual measure, right? In this case, the sum of sales dictates the size, right? So when do you think it's most effective comparing parts of a whole? No, we talked about that. Parts of a whole, you're really talking about like a pie chart, um, maybe like a stacked bar chart, maybe even like a stacked area chart. Um, but definitely not a packed bubble chart based on what we just saw. How about displaying trends over time? Again, for that, you're going to need um, an, either an area chart or what's the official term here? Area chart or, or a line chart, right? That's how you kind of see the progress of a measure over a period of time. Uh, third option, illustrating volume differences. That does sound like what we just saw, right? In terms of volume, the volume of sales. If you want to see the difference between supplies and phone, well, the size of the bubble kind of helps you see that. So definitely leaning towards the third option here. Fourth option, analyzing geographical data. Of course, when you're talking about that, you're gonna be referencing something like one of these maps, whether it's a symbol map or just you know uh, a general map. But for purposes of this question, it is going to be uh, illustrating volume differences. That's the best case scenario to use uh, a bubble chart based on the other options um, that you have here. Next question, which feature in Tableau provides the ability to automate report distribution via emails? So what is that behavior called? Job alerts, subscriptions, email scheduling, or filter actions. So hopefully you should now, it's pretty much obvious at this point, it's not gonna be job alerts. It is going to be subscriptions, in fact. Um, if you go over here where it talks about creating a subscription to a view or a workbook, um, basically that's uh, the official term for when you wanna be able to schedule emails to go, go out on a periodic basis where you can have your worksheets or your workbook send out as um, you know an image within the body and or uh, actually a PDF document within the email. And in some of the newer versions of Tableau Serve, now you're actually gonna find it under watch where you see kind of that eye icon. So you click on watch, then you go to subscriptions. That's how you would go about setting it up. So it is more of like a Tableau Server question. Uh, but yes, that is the official term, subscriptions. It's not gonna be email scheduling and it's not gonna be filter actions again. Uh, in fact, filter actions have more to do with uh, being able to filter data interactively uh, within Tableau, something like, uh, you know, if you go into a dashboard and you want to, you know, be able to click on something and have some of the other charts reflect that, that then, then you're getting into those filter actions. Uh, so again, subscriptions here is going to be the correct solution. Quick pause. If you like these videos, but you're serious about acing the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Examiner Certification, I've got news for you. Check out the link in the description if you're interested in practicing with an even more realistic set of practice exam questions. There are at least five different practice exams, 45 questions each, with the proper distribution of exam topic areas. You'll know exactly which questions you got right or wrong and what the correct solutions were. Now there are a limited number of spots available so be sure to take advantage of the limited time offer because as you know practice makes perfect. And that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the video helpful. As always be sure to like the video if you haven't already. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and of course as always I will see you on the next one. Thank you for watching. Yeah.